Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sayushi and today I wanted to have a video guide of how to set up an item filter for Path of Exile 2. As far as my understanding, this should work on consoles as well. So I'll put a link in the description to this website and this is where you'll end up crafting your filter and customizing it all yourself. Before we get into that, I'll just get straight to the point and say you'll have to log into your Path of Exile account on this website and then you could just select soft, regular, semi-strict, strict, strict. Uh, basically as you go up and down on this slider, it's going to change the types of gear that you end up seeing in the campaign, in the maps and whatever. And then you're just gonna go to export to POE and you're gonna have to save and sync. So the difference between save and sync and save and download is on PC, you could just download the filter and then you put it into the folder, but on console, you have to sync it with your account. Syncing also has some benefits on PC because the filter itself will dynamically shift and adjust as items become more valuable on the player market. And of course, once you save and sync your filter, you're gonna have to get in game. And when you're in game, you're gonna pause, go to options, and in the game tab, you're going to end up seeing it right in here. So you can see I've got a lot of these already downloaded, but the blue one is going to end up being the one that's tied to the online. So at any point now, I could just go back to the website, log into my account, and I could adjust the filter on the fly, and then it would end up working in game right after. They also, of course, do mention that if you can't see it, restart the game. The filter itself comes with a lot of benefits. It's not just the way that the loot looks. It's literally going to have like dynamic sound effects and other various things that'll make it a lot more obvious when there's something of value that dropped nearby. Like here's a quick overview that goes over some of the stuff and some of the big high value items, so on and so forth. Now, once you've put a significant amount of playtime into using the filter, you might wanna end up upping the strictness, but more importantly, you might wanna customize it a little bit. So that's where we'll go into here. Uh, let's just say, for example, we go to very strict and then we customize and we go to general currency. So we can see that Arcanist Etcher is not considered something that the filter will show you from now on. But if you still want to end up keeping this in the currency pool, you would simply just turn it back on. You might also want to change the gems a little bit as well. So by default on very strict, it's going to show you level 20 and 19 gems. But I just went into here and I customized and set this value equal to 18, which means that I'll see a level 18 spirit gem. I think the most important aspect of customizing is going to be the armor and class weapon types. So you'll notice that there is armor and weapons, and this is not something that we're gonna super get into, but you can see like expert altered rope. So this is going to be considered a tier one item, but if I click on tier two and then click on the altered robe, it would then put this item in a tier two category, which makes a different sound effect, makes it look different while it's on the ground and stuff. You can kind of do that to set up the gear to be the way that you want it to be in terms of its representation. So for me, I set stellar amulets to being tier three because I really wanna know when there's a stellar amulet on the ground because they sell for a lot on the player market. But my inventory was constantly getting bogged down with all of the armor and such. And there's a specific category here for hiding items. And this is really important because as you check mark these boxes, this is going to hide the gear. It's not something that you uncheck to remove it. This is going to be normal and magic gear, and I don't gamble on any of my gear, so I don't need any of these. But if at any point you could go into the weapon and maybe you're like, okay, let's see what weapons are available. I still want to see scepters, so I don't want to hide that because I'm playing as a witch. That's how you can end up customizing it. Keep in mind that it is going to end up being for normal and magic gear as a whole, while there is a separate category for rares, which are all of the yellow items. Generally speaking, I'm leaving all of these completely open so that I can pick all of them up for the chance shards when I destroy them, but I am getting to the point in the game where I'm starting to get so frustrated with how many trips I have to take going back to the, you know, my little hideout to break everything. So I'm probably gonna start hiding a lot of these that I don't need, like evasion and energy shield. I don't need that on a witch. There is also the option of changing the style of it. You can change the text colors, the border colors, all of that stuff. 
Generally speaking though, I think that it already looks really, really good at its base. And hopefully this video was helpful to you guys because that's pretty much all that we have to cover. There is a lot more complexity to it, but generally speaking, I'm hoping that this video is going to answer any of the questions that you had with regards to the filter because it has been a godsend. The default filter in the game, it's really bad compared to this.